Casey Salisbury. Good morning. Kind of Am I in the right How spot? You doing? Am I in the right spot? You are. You're perfect. perfect. Looking good as usual here on AM 1030 and FM 103.3. So, got a lot of things to talk about here. First things first. Uh, talked last week about school being back in session, about uh, traffic fines, of course, doubling in school zones, things like that, and then just the rate of speed through various roadways in Mason County. Yes. And how have things been in the last well, week? I have this theory, and we'll talk about crime stats in a minute. You know, I um, thank the folks on the North Shore. We have one of our speed devices up there. Okay. Um, I get to spend a little time myself up there talking to residents and parked alongside the road. It's absolutely... Why do you even park up there? It, it's absolutely... I mean, it is. there's not much road there. No. You could be on somebody's roof in a heartbeat. Yeah. But there was a little pull out there. We've got that. It's amazing to me how when a patrol car is parked there and the speed signs there, all of a sudden there's no traffic problem. No problem. Um, which leads me to my crime thing. I, I, I try to explain this to people, but I think to myself, if we were to put uh, troopers and deputies all the way up and down between here and Hoodsport and say there are going to be 12 of them there every day for the next year, what do you think the speed is going to happen? It's going to slow down. Slow folks out there. But when we go out and tell people, sorry, we don't have anybody available, we're not going to have anybody in the area, what happens to the, to this rate of speed? Anybody. It's the same thing with crime. As sure. soon as you cut back on the number of law enforcement officers in the area, you're going to see that crime rate start to creep. So, um, but thank you on the North Shore. With that sign is still up there. I still want to remind the people in the Lake Limerick area that um, it's an area of concern. Um, there's some particular areas, and, and you'll see us out there as well. It's just scary with the school. I mean, school buses and kids lollygagging around before and after school. It's still dark off. Oh, too. my. I talked to the uh, sergeant from the state patrol, and uh, he, he also is a resident of our county and understands this issue very well and, and they're uh, moving some troopers around to emphasis in, in, in on those areas but okay. please again it's just getting darker and now with a little bit of rain and and, and uh, with kids out there it's just asked to slow down yeah for sure uh, you were up in Lilywap as well talking with the great folks up there at their community club what was that yes Lilywap community club um, had a chance to go up there. Beautiful little community club was built in the early 1900s. Uh, wonderful group. I don't know, 40 people or so, 40, 50 people up there and ate dinner with the community folks from the community club. It's interesting to me how many people from when I first started many years ago are now full-time residents around the, the, the Lily Wap, Hoodsport, Lake Cushman area to mm -hmm. where years ago, very few. Yeah. Um, the other interesting thing to me is the and the people that you get a chance to meet that have moved in here from out of the area, that the, the talent that um, these people have been engineers, other places, just incredibly talented people that we have um, uh, moving into our community. Many of them were retired, but uh, just tremendous individuals. Uh, they were interested in our crime stats. And we can talk about that next if you'd mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. um, I, I ran off some uh, copies of our um, comp stat, which is our computer assisted data that tells us what our crime is, is recorded and gives us charts and graphs. And uh, we talked about specifically we ran uh, crime stats for, for areas, for that area. And then we talked about the overall stats for the county. And, and as I mentioned, um, actually we've mentioned over the years, we always felt that if we had places to hold people accountable, to keep people in jail and had enough deputies that we would see uh, a difference in crime. And over the years, crime has went down significantly for us uh, as a result of having um, the outsourcing for the jail. And we had adequate numbers of deputies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, still well below others, but we were at least hanging in there. Um, it's easy to note now watch, watching the stats at this time that since our jail um, has been capped and we're not able to hold like we used to or outsource that our, our crime rates gradually creeping up. Now some of that quite honestly when you look at stats for uh, the summer months when you start getting when school gets yeah, out yeah. And, and, and we get people visiting our crime rate because our population goes up a little bit but um, we're seeing a, a steady climb there and mainly in the areas of our thefts. Um, uh, those have gone up uh, uh, quite a bit and we've had itty bitty increases in other areas, but I'm concerned with uh, when I start seeing those and they rate direct directly with uh, where we're at for our lowered numbers of staff and our jail cap and it's starting to creep. So I got to ask you this because it kind of is going with what we just talked about with the speeding. You don't tell people or you tell people there's going to be a lot of law enforcement on Lungle Road and people will slow down. You tell them there's not. So people speed up. But we've talked here on the air about how we can't hold people in the jail. Right. Do you think that that 
I mean, oh, you just I, talking about that you, is kind of you know that exactly. Too. And people ask me about that, but the, the the fact of the matter is, is the folks in the jail know immediately because when we go out and make a contact on somebody, we may make a a, a contact on another issue and end up uh, contacting somebody. And and I even had people come up to me and tell me, uh, you know, I, I want to come and talk to you about something. I wouldn't normally, but I know that I got a warrant, so I know that I can't go to jail right now. So. They know. Yeah, it's not like it's any secret. Okay, and 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 if you you've been watching all the news about Mason County and all our struggles, um, and and the cutbacks you see, and the number of people that got laid off, or I should say, the people that were not hired, sure, because we were lacking people, but should have been. Uh, we were looking to replace those positions. Um, it, it, it's not a secret, and, and and that's really challenging. It's and and I would tell you again, I, Chief Moody and I've talked a couple of times. We're trying to arrange. I'm going to be gone yeah. next week. He's gone. He's back for a while. He had his hands full the other day. Um, th that's our frustration, not, not not with each other. Our frustration as as law enforcement officers to keep the community safe. Our responsibilities to do that, and when we don't have that space, and we don't have the staff to keep them in that space. Um, it's challenging. It's really, really tough when you're out there trying to, to keep a lid on things and hold people accountable and, and you're limited. And I know it's very difficult for our judges the same way. And, and, and in fact, it has an effect on our entire county. Oh, yeah. Well, the, uh, one more thing on this jail thing. And I just thought of this with school starting. It just popped into my head driving by seeing portables. And I'm sure that there is a lot of security concerns and things that you have to do. But do they make like portables for jail? You know what I'm saying? They'll bring in a, they say, yes. oh, we got too many kids. Well, I'll bring in another portable. I'll tell you how I know that. How do they it, it, when I was at Thurston County, we started running into the same thing. And before they got started building the new jail, uh, there was a day reporting area. It's not anything like, um, you know, a, a jail, security of a jail. Yeah. Just like in some police departments, they have individual um, holding cells. They're not you know, they're locked and things, but they're not secure like you would have inside cement yeah, brick and mortar yeah. building. But they, there are holding cells and different PDs that are out of ways. They have to hold somebody while they, they do an interview or something along that line before they take them to a county jail or a city jail. It's possible to do that. But it's just... But it's, if you did it here, it's a separate building, a whole separate staff, okay. separate heating, separate cooling. Sure. All those things uh, become a factor. There's a lot involved in that. Yeah. I can. I mean, I can only imagine. I learned a lot when I was at Thurston and, and developing uh, that, that, that jail was being developed over there and all the concerns. And every one of the concerns that were forecasted by Sheriff Edwards became a reality. Sure. And it sat for years empty. So it, very cautious planning. Very, it's got to be very thoughtful in how you do it and should be professional people developing it. Another big thing that we talk about often and hear a lot about up and down uh, all throughout, well, the country really, but is the opioid crisis. Yes. And I know that that helps contribute to some of the crime stats as well. You were up in the north part of the county talking with uh, uh, Chief Bakken from North Mason Regional Fire Authority, uh, Commissioner Schutte, I believe there too, mm -hmm. Dr. Yu from the health department, all talking opioid Yes. The epidemic. What was that conversation about? It was great. I mean, the, the, not all the information, but the, uh, beginning to sit down and talk with that group. Um, I'd worked with Dr. Yu for many, many years over at Thurston County when I was doing the drug education programs for there. So I know her well. Um, very well informed individual. And, and she has an excellent way of, of um, taking the clinical part of an issue and making it, um, uh, bringing it down for the rest of us that don't have the background that she has. And Dr. Yu spoke up there, uh, this uh, round table was, uh, uh, I would say Chief Bakken was instrumental in putting this together out of concern and what he's seeing in the fire services and responses to calls. Uh, Chief Bakken handed us, uh, it, it's not his, uh, it's uh, from the Washington State Department of Health, I believe, but the uh, number and age adjusted rates of opioid uh, related overdose deaths by county of residents in Washington state and rate per thousand in population, Mason County is the highest in the state. Per one, oh. excuse me, rate per 100,000, 100,000, okay. 100, rate per 100,000. So other places have more populous, but when we take a look at the um, uh, r related overdose deaths, um, it's very high here. I have the documentation here that uh, that uh, Dr. Yu and, and Chief Bakken handed out up there. I think the chief and I will be back on, we're, we're hoping maybe next week okay. sometime, if I don't get the other chief here, and chief's all over, yeah, if I don't sure. get the other chief here first, to talk a little bit about that and the concerns um, for our community and what, what can be done. Seen a lot of news uh, recently about the benefits of that Narcan thing yes. that the officers are carrying and 
I've even had heard reports that they were going to start in, up in King County or Seattle proper, perhaps, offering those for citizens to, yes. to have available. I know that uh, um, Chief Moody kind of took a lead on that right away and got yeah. his people involved. And, and we have a little bit different circumstance. We have a lot more people to train. So now all of our people through the training cycle throughout the year are carrying Narcan okay. that, that have been trained to use that. And I was uh, watching, and I want to say it was in Cleveland, I think. I'm not sure. Somewhere in Ohio, I thought it was because uh, quite a problem there. The librarians, because there were so many issues in libraries. Wow. They were yeah. actually trained in some of the showed, uh, and, and some of the people, because there was a park outside sure. or something like that, that there was a, um, a great need for that. And Public it, it buildings, been, private bathrooms. Yes, okay. those kind of things. And they had trained and, and they were showing that on TV a while back. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing um, to save that life, but it's even more important thing to take uh, that individual and, and uh, w work with them to move them yeah. away from that is the, is the key part of that. Is the opioid epidemic illicit drugs or is it still oxycontin from uh, doctor prescriptions or is it getting those types of prescription drugs but on larger scales on the black market what is it here in mason county i should have brought dr Yu with us today yeah um i in talking with dr Yu and her presentation up there you know the a lot of that um uh, much of it was the the oxycontin things and i still will tell you we have drug take back you know mm -hmm. the box is there and that is full I mean, we constantly are, are emptying that, and the undersheriff and I drive all the way to Spokane to Airway Heights to drop that uh, because we fill up a van full and, and we run that all the way to Spokane is, oh, wow. is the place that you can get rid of that. Um, the Oxycontin things is, is she will tell you where, where a lot of prescribed stuff was coming out. A lot of it was being stolen out of homes and things like that is what was happening. And now there's synthetic opioids that are out there, and, and that, that's even more challenging. According to Dr. Yu, you know, the, the, the physicians uh, for the most part are educated that uh, uh, where it was going before and have, have really become um, uh, prudent and, and limiting uh, what they're prescribing uh, much more than there had been in the past mm -hmm. to bring that down. But now you're going to the synthetic opioids and, and uh, you, you, you've got um, car fentanyl and all these other things that are coming out. They're extremely dangerous and it's just kind of um, uh, taking over right yeah. now. Wow. Uh, Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, we're about out of here, but it sounds like we've got some great conversations upcoming with uh, plenty of wonderful guests as well. It's always good talking with Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.